why that is the case. Now, it seems that probably I'm a bit older than you as well. I might be the oldest person in this room, it's terrible, but uh, uh, like 30 years ago, when I was driving in France with a German uh, license plate in France, the French people, people like you, you, I was at your age, they were spitting on the car. I'm not joking, they were spitting on the car. When I parked the car and came back, it was full of spit because it was that German license plate, not the Turkish one. Now they would spit because I'm Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> now, things have, uh, uh, so things have changed very dramatically. Now I think uh, it's very difficult to distinguish the French from the Germans, the youth, I mean, the elderly probably. Uh, they still might have some hard feelings or bad memories, but they use they will time. This is unbelievable. So this is 30 years. This is not like 300 years, it's 30 years. And uh, probably this, these things have actually changed between 1970s until 1990s. Actually, that span of time of 20 years, these things have changed very dramatically. It didn't take even 30 years. So I'm, I'm more uh, 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 optimistic about now my second comment, my second comment is on is on actually Attila's very uh, interesting paper. I said I disagree. Uh, I have to disagree because we Turks count on functionalism. The only way that Turkey will ever become a member of the EU is because of functionalism. That will be the test of the functionalist theory. Let me articulate on that. The pressure of competition on EU and EU countries will get tougher and tougher uh, because of, essentially, because of the competition coming from China and India, but not only that, from many other countries, and including from the US. At a time, at a time when the EU labor force population will be declining, the population aging, labor force declining, uh, and during that period, if Turkey manages in the coming 10 years uh, to maintain its high rate of growth, which is about 7% uh, on average now last five years, that's more than doubling the GMP per capita. That's an incredible thing. And it's a very dynamic society in many respects. So Turkey will become too attractive simply for EU to reject. That's the only bet we have. Otherwise, there are sufficient jerks in Europe like Sarkozy and so on who will find millions of arguments why Turkey shouldn't be part of the EU. But the functionalist argument uh, will prevail, I hope, we hope. Of course, we will always have friends in the EU, both leaders and among the population, as people will learn more about Turkey and Turks, especially young people like you, get to know each other and so on the support for Turkish membership at the grassroots level, I believe, will increase. That's something else. However, however, it will, the determining factor will be economics. And again, because of that, I think I agree with you that monetary union does not directly relate to tighter fiscal union, and tighter fiscal union does not automatically lead to a political, a stronger political union or supranational body. I, I fully agree with these things because EU had the luxury. It was a period under which there wasn't really so tough economic competition, but, but it's coming now. So EU has to compete on two fronts. One on the labor front, pure labor. The other on the technology front. Now the United States is the leading uh, technology country, not thanks to the American born Americans, because the United States is uh, <coughs> importing brains from all over the world. That's good for the US and that's good for the brains that are imported. I don't, uh, I don't believe in that brain drain argument very much. Uh, rather than brains being wasted, it's better they are drained and that those brains somewhat get back to their own country. So if you look at China, India and so on, most of the brains that are uh, doing good work there are uh, US trained, so there's nothing I find no problem. But anyway, so I think I think that uh, I think that now uh, the room for maneuver is getting tighter and tighter in EU. 
So there won't be so many possibilities of choosing this type of policy or that type of policy or this and that. Uh, they won't have the EU countries, fortunately or unfortunately, will not have the luxury of having a very high unemployment rate, meaning because unemployment means keeping people out of work, keeping people out of productive contribution to the country. They won't have the luxury of having such a lousy educational system, and so on and so on. Uh, so as far as Turkey is concerned also, they will see more uh, opportunities in having Turkey rather than not. Coming to the specific issue, the monetary union, fiscal union, uh, now there is not even fiscal harmonization in the EU, but the EU is losing its competitive edge. Competition implies fiscal harmonization. Competition implies that uh, stability and growth path that nobody obeys will have to be reinforced more strongly. So a, better, a more competitive Europe will be a fiscally more uh, harmonized Europe. Would that imply also a tighter political Europe? That I don't know. That I mean, I do not make that jump. That's not so automatic. Might, might not, and it's not really my spot. So I would very much, uh, before we conclude this part of the, uh, and then we, without a break, we will continue with questions from the floor, uh, if probably Marco uh, responds to my uh, comments, because I directly commented on this, uh, on this presentation. Uh, I mean, uh, Attila, I'm sorry. Okay, so, uh, unfortunately, I have to disagree with the disagreement. Uh, because I think that there is no disagreement, only just some misunderstanding. <laughs> I think uh, that, uh, so there are two parallel processes. On the one hand, you know, there is widening, which is also extension of uh, integration to new spheres, and on the other hand, enlargement. 